Today, we're going to look at a complete transformation of a landscape image that I shot recently in the Lake District. You can see the image in front of you now. The problem with this image is that it exceeded the dynamic range of my camera. Now I was shooting with a Fuji X-T2 and whilst I had some neutral density graduated filters with me, I found that if I tried to use them, it actually made the upper part of the image too dark in the trees and I couldn't reveal any detail. So this is a typical image where using the neutral density grads just doesn't work. My solution was to actually shoot five images at different exposures. So this is the first one which is the unadjusted image. We then have one that is two stops overexposed and you can see this over in the exposure bias setting in Lightroom. We then have one that's one stop overexposed followed by one that's one step underexposed and one that's then two stops underexposed. Now if I can combine all five of these images together I should get something that will have a much nicer exposure. Now rather than doing this in Photoshop with exposure blending I'm actually going to do it fairly simply in Lightroom using the HDR option. Now if you haven't used Lightroom HDR before it doesn't look garish like a lot of the HDR software. It actually produces quite a good blended image and that we can then use to work on. So all I need to do is select the first image in the sequence, hold down my shift key, select the last image in the sequence and then I can right click and I can photo merge to HDR. Now in the HDR software, one thing that I need to do is auto align. And the reason for this is that the, the five images I shot were handheld. I didn't have a tripod with me. So there's going to be slight variations in the image between each shot. We now have the preview generated from the images. You'll notice the de-ghost amount, which is the amount of movement between the frames, is actually set to high and that will try to remove any movement in the branches as well as the alignment differences in the camera. The other setting you've got here is also an auto option and what that tries to do is make this look like a, a perfect image and actually it's produced quite a good result from that. So I'm going to actually merge with that setting. The HDR merge is now complete and this is the image that results from it. As you can see over on the right side all the adjustments have been made automatically by the software trying to create a perfect exposure and to be honest it's done a pretty good job just using those settings so I'm going to keep those. There are though a few settings that I now need to change and the first one is the camera profile now I've been shooting using the Fuji and my default profile in there is Provia standard and that's been carried through into the raw files. What I'm going to do instead is choose this Adobe landscape because I quite like that and it seems to give me a larger dynamic range as you can see. So open the shadows a bit and pull down the highlights. The next thing I'm noticing now I've made that change is that it looks like I've got some chromatic aberration still around the trees and that tends to get highlighted when you do this sort of HDR merging. I'm going to just zoom into 200% and you can see I've got that red fringe around the brighter areas where the uh, the dark branches are cutting across it. So what I'm going to do is just come down to the lens correction section. You can see I've already got remove chromatic aberration on. I'm just going to switch to the manual tab and it's a purple fringe that I'm seeing. So I'm going to just add a couple of pixels of purple defringe and that's removed the defringe, sorry, the, the fringing problem from these tree branches. Just go back to one to one and I'll zoom out. Now there's a couple of things that I do like about this image. You can see now that the fog that was rising or the mist that was rising off the lake has started to be accentuated. The problem though that I've got is that this area here is still a bit too light. I'd like to darken it just slightly. And also the camera's done a pretty good job of removing the warm light that was in the clouds. And it's turned the whole image a little bit bluey green colour. So I'm going to correct that. So let's go up now to the temperature section. I'm just going to warm it up very slightly. 
and that gives me more of what I was getting at the time. So it's still quite a, a bluish colour to the image, but I can see the warmth starting to creep in. At the moment, what I'm trying to do is create an image that gives me a good starting position to then enhance using other software to add special effects. Let's now turn our attention to removing the highlights or dealing with the highlights that are getting very near to being overexposed. So I'm going to do this using the graduated filter and I'm just going to make a selection across that area. I can see that the, the actual highlights in the reflection are actually reasonably well exposed but they're just a little bit too bright in the actual clouds. If I tick this here, you can see the red overlay, which is the areas that have been selected. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the selection from the trees and the tree line, because if I start to adjust and darken the sky, I'll have exactly the same problem I had with the neutral density filter, which is I'll darken the trees as well, and I don't want to do that. I'm going to switch to now my brush that's within my mask, and I'm going to select the erase brush. Now notice I've got the auto mask on and I've got my flow to 100%. I now need to create a much larger brush. So I'm just going to enlarge this. And that should do. And now I'm just going to click on the dark trunks. And as you can see, that's doing a pretty good job of taking away the selection from the dark areas but it still leaves the selection on the light areas. So that's actually quite a good adjustment. Now, before I do anything else, let's just see what would happen if we adjust that. And what I want to do is I want to pull the highlights down. And that's not too bad, but I'm going to also just reduce the contrast a little bit in the sky and reduce the exposure very slightly. And that actually looks like a reasonable job. I don't have to do anything else. What I might just try to do is go to a luminance range selection and I'm going to tell the software not to make a selection in any of the mid-tones. So really I'm looking here at the highlights and the whites in terms of the tones in Lightroom. And that looks pretty good. Let's just turn it off a second. So that's it off. That's it on, and it actually balances out with the reflection of the lake really well. So I'm happy with that. A couple more adjustments. I want to really just darken those highlights a little bit further in the tone curve, but I also want to lighten the, the shadows very slightly. And what that's doing is it's allowing you to see the mist a little bit more clearly here, and it's also opened up the shadows here so you can see into the trees a little bit better. What I need to do is now check the areas oh, at 100% and they actually still look very good. If I go into 200%, you can see there's a lot of detail in there and there isn't much noise at all. The reason for that is because I've created this HDR merged image. If I hadn't created the HDR image, you'd be seeing a lot of noise where we'd open the shadows. So that's really, it's about the quality of the resulting image. Now overall, I like that as a general well-exposed image that's been corrected, ready for the next stage of editing. So I'm going to now take this image and I'm going to edit it in Photoshop. Now the reason that I'm choosing to work in Photoshop is that I'll be able to use layers and masks and combine the power of other tools as well. So the intention is I'm going to make some adjustments using some of the Nick collection and then I'm also going to do adjustments using On One Photo Raw. Now I'm going to start by trying to enhance some of this mist that's in the foreground on the lake here. And to do that I'm going to actually use Color Effects Pro. So I'll just select Color Effects Pro. And I've got this dynamic pro uh, contrast open at the moment, which I do like the adjustment that that gives me. And I'm going to use that again in a minute. But first, I want to actually ed edit this and add some fog in using the fog filter. Now, as you can see, the fog filter is very strong and it adds an effect across the entire image. I only want to affect this part of the image here. 
So to start with, I'm going to add a couple of control points to actually create the fog effect. And I'll just size those. And now I'm going to hold down my Option key or Alt key if you're using a PC. And I'm just going to click and drag to duplicate that effect further. Now at the moment it's still not looking very natural. So what I need to do now is use a negative control point to remove some of the adjustments from further up in the image. And that just takes the fog off the top of the trees. And the other place I want to remove it from is just this foreground here where the the headland is sticking out into the image. That gives it a feeling more around as if this is in the foreground and then the fog's behind it. Now, I'm not quite happy with the adjustment here. It seems to be too taking too much out of the trees there. And I'm just going to, I can play around with the opacity of this spot. So by default a negative control points down at zero but you can gradually increase the opacity if you want to. Now that's created quite a nice fog effect. Probably a little too strong so we can actually change the fog method. And there's another fog that looks slightly better actually. Um, I do like that one and that one's just a little bit too strong. So actually I'll go for three and I can now reduce the intensity of that very slightly. So there's the original and there's the adjusted effect. And I think I've just got a bit of fog coming into the tree branches there. So I'm just going to duplicate that control point and remove those. And that looks to be quite a nice effect now. So I'm just going to go back to my pro contrast filter and now I'm going to add some dynamic contrast. And that just opens up the shadow areas a little bit more in the foreground. So if I turn that off, you'll see what I mean. So that's it without, that's it with it added in. And it doesn't seem to affect this area over here. So that's actually quite a nice effect. So I'm going to now click OK and get that back into Photoshop. Now, as you can see, the color effects that I've just used is created on a new layer and I've got my system set up to do that automatically. So there was my original, there's my new layer. And I now need to enhance this to make it look a little bit more realistic. What I want to do is make some of the trees or the tops of the trees pop out of the fog a little bit more. So to do that, I'm now going to add a layer mask. And I've got my brush tool selected. I'm painting with black and I've got it set to about 14, 15%. I'm now going to size my brush to be quite small. And I'm just going to take the top of the fog off these trees. So all I'm doing here is I'm painting on the layer mask that's attached to this layer with black. And that's hiding the effect from these trees. And that makes it look like the tops of the trees are actually showing through the fog a little bit more. And again, I'm going to do that down there. And as you can see, as I'm painting, they're becoming just that little bit darker. I'm also going to highlight or emphasize this tree over on the edge a little bit more so it doesn't look like it's got the fog over it. It looks like it's come through the fog. And that tends to give this feeling of more depth into the image. Now I'm also just going to come down into the trees here and there with the with the filter. So here you can see there, although the filter's covering it, I'm just now getting the trees to stick through that a little bit more. So that doesn't look too bad. And it looks a little bit more like a nice mist effect. Now maybe I've done that a little bit too strongly there so I'm going to switch to white now. And I'm just going to paint back on my mask to hide some of the black masking effects that I created. And that actually looks quite good now. So turn it off, turn it back on. I'm happy with that. 
we can now move on to look at the next effect that we want to add. And I'm just going to duplicate my layer by holding down Shift, Alt, Control and E on a PC or on a Mac. It's Shift, Option and Command. And that creates a stamp layer. Now the stamp layer is the sum of all the layers below it and it's just a straightforward pixel layer. So if I turn off the layer below it, you can see the image hasn't changed. But we've now got this stamp layer, which is a duplicate layer. And I'm just going to rename that to be on one because the next set of adjustments I want to create are in on one photo raw. So let's go to the filter menu. I'm going to pick on one and I'm going to go into the effects 2019 software. The reason I've decided to use on one here rather than using the Nick collection is that I want to enhance the clouds and the color in the clouds because when I was at this lake, the clouds seem to have quite a nice orangey color to them. And as I said before, the camera's done a good job of neutralizing that. If I try to recreate that in the Nick collection, the ways I use tend to look a little bit synthetic. So I've come into on one where I'm going to use the photo filter to make a selection of the brightest areas in the sky and then to color these. Afterwards, I'll go back into Nick and then I'll enhance it further. And I find that that has a more natural effect on the image than trying to do all the enhancements in just Nick collection. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick one of these presets that we have in the collection. Now I don't like some of these because they're just a little bit too harsh, but the magic desert one tends to be quite nice. Now that's already created a lovely effect on the image. The thing I'm not sure about at the moment is this vignette that's helping darken the sky, but I'll leave it in place for the moment. I may reduce it later because there's another vignette that can be used in the, the Nick collection in uh, Color Effects Pro that's actually really good for this sort of thing. I think I'm probably going to turn the vignette off and I'm going to add a new photo filter. Now the photo filters are just like putting a colored filter in front of your camera lens. And the first one I want to create with though is this N85 filter and that's got quite a, a deep orange color to it. The problem is it's affecting a lot of areas that I don't want it to affect. I want it to affect just the highlights. So let's first off just strengthen that so you can see where it is very easily. I'm now going to click on this little geared cog icon here and that allows me to select that I want to apply this to the highlights and you can immediately see what it recognizes as being a highlight and what it's now applying the filter to. And you can control that using this range slider here. So I'm going to increase the range slightly because I want it to pick up some of the mist here and add a golden effect to that. And I'm, I'm okay with that. That's looking quite good. I'm going to turn that off and now I'm going to go to a mask and I'm going to create a luminosity mask. And what that's doing is it's hiding the effect from the darkest areas, but it's applying it to the lighter areas. So you can see that the sky, the light areas in the sky are being affected, but the shadowy areas here are not being affected. And we can control that further. So I'm just going to darken down the mask. If you want to see the mask, you can click this view option here, and that'll show you what, I, what I'm seeing. I'm also going to feather it very slightly. And that allows me to select these areas in white. So that's where the filter should be applied to. And you can see that's now what's happening. Now it is at the moment very strong. So I'm just going to reduce the strength of that. And the reason I want to do this is because I want to add another filter that's slightly different color. So this creates my first background layer of color in the sky. And now I'll create this next photo filter, but this time I'm going to use the 81A, which is a different color of orange. It's a little bit more brighter. And what I'm going to do here is rather than using a mask, I'm going to paint it on manually. So the first thing I'll do is I'll invert that rather than creating this luminosity mask. And I've got the option here to paint in. And I'm also going to select this perfect brush. Now what the perfect brush does is it tries to select areas that are very similar to what you're uh, painting on. 
it should try to avoid some of the darker trees. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just make an initial large selection. I've got my feather set to quite large. I've got an opacity just of 14% and that allows me to make multiple strokes with the brush. And as I'm painting, that's gradually colouring up the sky area using my adjustment. I'll just be very careful and paint in the background there. And I'm also just going to increase the amount of this so you can see it a little bit more clearly where I'm painting. And I'll paint as well. I mustn't forget the highlights that are in the in the reflection. And that's making a reasonable job now of actually emphasizing some of the color in the clouds that I saw at the time when I was shooting this. Now again what I'm going to do is I'm just going to feather that very slightly to help blend it with the rest of the image. I can see here that this area needs to be a little bit more selected and actually I'll take off the perfect brush for that because what I want to do is just make a nice general selection. And now you can control the effect and where it's being applied to using this feather adjustment. I'm also going to reduce the density. Now, if I look at the mask, I'll show you, and you can see what's been selected, what hasn't. If I reduce the density, you'll notice that the areas that are black are getting slightly lighter, and that should allow the effect to show through slightly in other areas. And that looks quite good. So I'm happy with those adjustments. Let's just turn on that vignette now and that's looking quite good. The other thing I might just do is change the colour temperature of the colour enhancement further down and I might also just boost the clarity over all of the image and that's allowing these areas to show through in much more detail than the other areas. If the shadows are closing up a little bit too much you can lighten them and that's looking now like quite a natural enhancement. If I turn the preview off, that's the original, and that's the enhanced image. So I'm going to actually go with that, and we'll now apply that to the layer in Photoshop. Now that I'm back in Photoshop, you can see that I've got my on one layer with the adjustments applied. If I turn that off, you can see the image before we applied those adjustments. It's a little bit strong at the moment for my taste. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to reduce the opacity of the layer down to around 75%. And that allows this to look a little bit more natural and blend the on one adjustments in with the image layers below it. I'm now at a point where I want to enhance the sky a little bit further and add some more color and saturation into the image. And I'm gonna do that using Viveza. I'm only going to work to start with selectively using control points and I'm going to add a control point first to select the sky. Now as I'm adjusting this I'm holding down my command key and this shows me the mask that's being created so you can see here the adjustments on the sky is actually being selected. I can now apply my warming filter and that adds in a little bit more colour into those areas. I don't want to make it too strong, but I will now increase the saturation as well. And also the contrast. Now the warmth's looking a little bit too strong there, so I'll just tone it down a little bit. I'm also going to duplicate this adjustment and I'm going to apply a duplicate of it down onto the reflection to make sure that that's also got quite a nice colour boost. The next adjustment is going to be to the tree area. 
Again, I'm holding down my command key and that's showing me the area that's being selected. I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is just warm it very slightly. So it looks like some of the warm lights now falling on the mist on the lake. I'm also going to brighten that area very slightly to draw your eye into it and just emphasize the feeling of mist as well. Now overall that's looking quite a bit better. So I'll just turn the preview off, turn it back on. That's added the color in. I'm now going to boost the overall image saturation very slightly. And I'm going to just use the shadow adjustments to darken the shadow areas here on the image and that makes them appear more silhouetted now against the uh, against the light sky. Overall I'm happy with that but I might apply just a little bit more warmth to the image globally and that's looking not too bad. These areas are still perhaps a little bit too too warm now for my liking and I'll just reduce down the saturation very slightly. I'll just try reducing the contrast as well, sorry the brightness and that doesn't really have the effect I want. I will actually reduce the contrast very slightly in those areas. So overall, if I turn that off and turn it back on, that's looking a lot better. I'll now click OK and I'm going back to Photoshop. Now again, when you get it into Photoshop and you suddenly see it against the original, it's, it's now looking like I may have pushed that a little bit too far. So again, I'll just reduce my opacity. I'm actually going to mask out some of the areas of the sky as well because I think they're just applied a little bit too strongly. I'll just resize my brush and I'm painting now again with a black, a, a black brush onto these areas just to tone down the adjustment very slightly on the, the sky and also very slightly on the on the uh, reflection here and I quite like the look of that. The final thing that I want to do now is I'm going to actually apply a vignette again to this image in Color Effects Pro. Now a couple of things I can do with Color Effects Pro. I can correct the color cast here if I want to just to try to tone it down a little bit more and it does look a little bit better with a small amount of color correction applied using the Pro Contrast filter. The other adjustment I want to apply though is to create a vignette and I'm actually going to do it using this darken and lighten center and I'm first going to select a oval shape to the image and I can now lighten the center of the image further as well as then separately adjust the border luminosity and I can place my center of my image using this place center option to make sure that I get the look I want and actually I'm quite happy with that and that's created the image now as I want it. So let's click OK. And overall, I think that we'll just move that. I think that looks like a much nicer image. So now let's just put all the adjustments we've applied together into one folder. And I'll just call that adjustments. And now we can turn it off to look at the original in comparison. Now that was the image that came out of Lightroom. So it wasn't even the original exposure that we had. And following the adjustments, that's the effect that we've got. So we can now see the color in the sky. That's the most obvious. We've got good detail in the tree and the shadow areas. And we've got this lovely mist that's appearing on the lake. Overall, that looks like quite a substantial transformation and improvement on the image. And that's actually much nearer to how I imagined I was seeing the scene when I took the picture back on the day. I hope you found that useful. I'm Robin Worley. You've been watching Lenscraft. I'll see you next time for another video.